God bless you, family. King Jesus bless you. I love you guys. Thank you for tuning in. So are there going to be nuclear bombs in Israel soon? Well, I would say yes, because in Ezekiel 38, 39, Israel is all alone. You've got that great horde from the north coming. Right now, Israel is defending northern uh, Israel uh, against southern Lebanon, where Hezbollah, um, supplied by Iran, is is gearing up for <coughs> excuse me, right for a great attack. And so, Israel is all alone. Israel is pretty much all alone right now. And then we know when when Israel is attacked, the Lord God Himself will intervene. And uh, it says that enemy like a cloud will come over Israel. And could that be those bombs coming and some nukes, maybe many nukes. And uh, the Lord God intervenes somehow and the enemy is destructed with a uh, hail and, and fire coming down on the enemy. That sounds like, like nuclear uh, fallout. And for, for seven years, they're burning the weapons for energy, nuclear energy. And... There's specialists. Every time they see a bone in the carnage, they have specialists come and thus purify the land. So that's happening. And it made me think of uh, off Telegram I saw where Netanyahu was quoted as saying, Iran is on her way to conquering the entire Middle East. Quote, it's only a matter of time. And it makes me think, you know, like, God bless Israel, help Israel. Uh, a third of Israel will be saved through the tribulation. <clears throat> Israel needs the Messiah. The Messiah came from Israel, right? And uh, Israel uh, did not receive the Messiah. Uh, said his blood be on us and on our children. Israel has had quite, uh, quite a history. And just this this statement by Netanyahu saying this, you know, just kind of reminds me he he needs Jesus. He doesn't know the scriptures. Iran is not going to conquer anything. Iran is going to be destroyed with Turkey and with Russia. Uh, God's word says it right there in Ezekiel. So uh, it made me think of that. Um, and also, it makes me think of the days of Noah, the total days of Noah. When I think of the days of Noah, I think of just the wickedness. Like Jesus tells us, in uh, Matthew 24 but as the days of Noah were so shall also the coming of the son of man be for as in the days they that were before the flood they were eating drinking marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away so shall also the coming of the son of man be so that's generally how I tend to think of the days of Noah. Um, <clears throat> people not knowing anything um, and just kind of carrying on, uh, oblivious to, to such things. And it came and got them, okay? Those days of Noah also, um, you know, I think of that. And then I just, you know, further, I think I always associate with that just that when I think of the days of Noah, I think of how wicked they were. Um, and we'll jump to Genesis, talking about this. And this is so early in Scripture, right? Like the Lord creates everything, it's good. And then uh, corruption comes, sin comes, the devil. Um, and then here we are in Genesis 6, verse 4. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them. The same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. Yeah, the giants here. The fallen angels intermingled with human women created giants. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually, right? This is what I think of with the days of Noah. But recently it's been on my spirit. There's more to it. <clears throat> in terms of the days of Noah. And I see that in verse 8 of Genesis 6. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. 
So we think about the corruption. We think about these fallen angels messed with mankind. Um, they messed with the animals. E even everything had to be destroyed, the Lord said. I believe the corruption was getting on everything, all creation. <clears throat> so it makes me think of tying this back in with what Netanyahu said about Iran and just this hatred of the Jews. Iran hating the Jews. Um, it makes me think in Genesis, why did these fallen ones, you know, why do they want to intermingle with women and, and create the, the, these Nephilim, these fallen ones? Well, because, you know, these fallen sons of God, God's sons, creation, you know, we got to understand they're very, very wise, brilliant, amazing. <clears throat> so you would have to think that they know a lot of things. They know, they know of the Lord and, you know, his word and stuff, right? That the, the devils, uh, Jesus talks about, they, or maybe Paul wrote about it, that, um, the, the demons profess the Lord and they shudder like they believe um, so, so they know things <clears throat> and this just makes me think that okay so since they know things they knew Messiah would come of man um, right there in Genesis it talks about the seed of the serpent will be against the seed of the woman and seed is always a man but we hear this language seed of the woman talking about that um, that Holy Spirit coming down on woman, on Jesus' earthly mother, um, who, who bore him by the Spirit, right? The Lord God coming down, taking flesh in a humble manner through man, through woman. Okay, so, so these fallen ones, I believe they knew that. That's the reason they wanted to corrupt the whole human um, genetics, right? Because the Messiah would come. They knew this, right? They knew this, and they were opposed to him, talking about that battle that would happen. The, the serpent would strike the heel, and the heel of King Jesus would strike and crush his head. They knew this was coming, so, you know, in their, their pride, their wretchedness, their fallenness, they're like, let's corrupt everything. Therefore, Messiah cannot come. God's word will not be true. We will not go to the place destined for us. I believe they probably knew that as well, <clears throat> and that was strong motivation for them. Like, we have to corrupt. Let's corrupt everything. Let's fight against, let's rail against God, you know, in, in their, just their wickedness, thinking they can even do such a thing. So, it makes me think of um, that tie-in with Iran. Like, it's just, it's always been this demonic thing, uh, this wicked thing uh, to kill, to kill Jews, to corrupt humanity, to try to prevent Bible prophecy. This is why Bible prophecy is so great to know this when we see this hatred against Israel, against Jews. You know, I mean, I would think perhaps somebody who doesn't know Scripture, who isn't Holy Spirit filled, they might see this and think, well, maybe these Jews are bad. Maybe there's something to it. You know, have they been a problem to everybody? I could see, you know, if you didn't have discernment, if you didn't know the Word of God, you might think like, I don't know, maybe, maybe they should just kill all Jews and destroy Israel. Maybe the world would have peace. Man, I tell you, the devil, you know, when we look at like uh, the Holocaust and, and just how all the world is saying, yeah, Palestine and rails against Israel. Um, Jesus said in Matthew 24, see that you are not deceived. And, um, and these are spiritual things we fight against, not against flesh and blood, right? So it's these spirits, these evil spirits who get in men who deceive and want people to have a certain terrible attitude towards Jews, God's chosen people. He's going to deal with them. They've been in disobedience, um, you know, until the fullness of the Gentiles for us to come in, those of us who are not Jews, to be converted by Jesus. And then the fullness, they'll come back, a third of them, through tribulation. Uh, the book of Revelation is so Jewish, the Lord's going to deal with Israel, right? Anyways, those were some thoughts I had. And there's a great word of hope in uh, in this days of Noah. I feel like the Spirit impressed upon um, my spirit together with my spirit as I was thinking about the days of Noah and how, like I read to you guys, <clears throat> uh, how in verse 8, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah wasn't anything special, but the Lord gave him grace, a gift, chose him, his sons, their wives, and his wife, eight in total, Eight, the number of new beginnings, I believe. Isn't that great? 
Okay, he was gonna start anew. Okay, so the three words that were impressed upon me with this grace that Noah found, uh, number one is grace. There's grace during the days of Noah, during these last days. <clears throat> Like Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be even before I, the Son of Man, comes. You know, it's not all bad. It's bad. It's terrible. It's wicked. But there's grace. There was grace on Noah. There's nothing new under the sun. What has been shall be again. Uh, prophecy, what do they say? Like prophecy is pattern and pattern is prophecy. So we see this in the days of Noah. There's going to be grace, guys. There's grace for us. There's help for us. There's free gifts for us. We are the children of God. He takes care of the sparrows. Um, he magnificently clothes the, the, you know, the, the grass of the fields with flowers. It's beautiful. Better uh, dressed than, than King Solomon. He takes care of the things he loves, his good creation. And how much more us. Let's not be of little faith. Let's believe that. He's a good father. He, he loves us. Okay, grace is number one. Number two is that providence. Um, right, providence, taking care of Noah, giving him this timetable of lengthy time to build the ark, to be protected, to not be corrupted, even though every man only thought about um, and his heart was inclined towards evil continuously. Wow, that's his whole neighborhood and community. But the Lord protected him, set him apart, made him holy. That's what holiness is, being set apart for a purpose. Wow, you guys see the providence that's going to be us too. We see all this terrible stuff, but let us remember the patterns, the prophecy, how he protected Noah. Uh, he's going to have that providence for us too in different ways. And uh, similarly with the grace, with the providence, and then just the protection, overarching sense of we're going to be protected. Remember Noah with the ark, he was protected. The wrath didn't come until he was in there. Then the Lord sealed the door, right? We don't orchestrate and do all these things. If the Lord moves you to, to be a prepper and to prepare and whatnot, you know, praise the Lord, do that. But it is the Lord who will protect, who will do it, who will finally close the door for us and protect us. And that protection is going to come in different ways as we persevere through it. It's hard. There's going to be great types of protection. But ultimately, there will be that trumpet blast, that shout of command. King Jesus coming himself. He's going to give us the greatest protection by the extraction, by the exit plan, um, the safety bridge to get out of here, to take us. We're going to be protected. We're going to be protected before the wrath comes. It's clamping down. It's a Red Sea moment looking thing. Israel is this tinderbox. And with this language of Netanyahu saying, we're not going to stop until we have total victory. And Iran is on its way to conquering the Middle East. It's a matter of time. With this type of language, you're getting people riled up. They're going to hear that and they're going to be like, He's not going to stop. Israel's not going to stop. This is genocide, whatever. You know, it's looking bad. All these nations, North Korea, South Korea, Russia, China, um, stuff in Bolivia is going on, Venezuela, everywhere is <laughs> looking terrible. But that protection is promised. Prophecy is pattern. Um, and I would sense that the Lord would have me share these words from you for the days of Noah. The total days of Noah, something I'm learning. It's not just bad, it's the total days of Noah. All of the scripture, uh, that, that, that grace was found by Noah. Um, and we can find that same grace with, with the grace, the gift, the providence of the Lord and his protection. So I hope these three words and concepts and, and these uh, principles that we derive and extract from scripture can... Uh, speak to you guys and encourage you as well uh, no matter how ugly and dark it looks and this is world war three that i believe we're already in and this language is so um you know it's just going to compel people to, to be freaked out and you know when people get worried and get scared stupid things happen i could see tactical nukes going off somewhere in man, many places and when they do more could happen and and we know this is, this is going to come, uh, especially during the tribulation. There's going to be so much carnage. Billions, I mean, killed, blood everywhere. It's going to be terrible. But we have the hope of Scripture. We have the promises of King Jesus. And I'll end with this, how I think uh, in Peter mentioned, knowing like all things shall be burned with fire, knowing the ending, what manner of uh, living and holy conversation should we be in? 
So let's go forth to bless other people, to give them seeds, to give them words from the word, and to draw them closer to King Jesus, knowing like it's going to be carnage. It's going to be a living horror movie for seven years. Uh, let's be a little more bold and courageous to um, just share Jesus unabashedly, unashamed. Who cares if they think that dude's kind of a lot? Like, who cares, man? We're trying to save souls. <laughs> people are going to hell in the tribulation before that. Like, let's uh, love these people who are image bearers and made in the image and likeness of, of the one true God. Even our enemies, right? There's only saved and unsaved at the end of the day. So let's go forth and get them. Give them Jesus. Get people to Jesus and Jesus to people. So I pray this uh, blessed you guys. Thanks for watching my video. I appreciate it. Please do hit the thumbs up and share this video. And I will see you next time. God bless you.